yo he tenido violencia doméstica, he tenido tráfico humano, he tenido un... Eh, también he sido secuestrada y durante muchos años he trabajado pues sin recibir ni un centavo, ni un peso durante 12 años. I think that an important thing when we're talking about LGBTQ identities is that we're very often dehumanized in media and shown to be sort of a joke or something that's just about being a sexual fetish or that's just about, you know, sort of a lifestyle choice is the language that gets used for people. Um, when in reality, these are integral parts of our identity that are always a part of us. There's been an absolute cultural, systemic, uh, and in my mind, it seems deliberate avoidance or ignorance of the services to boys and men. So the first step would be to ask the organizations that are providing services uh, to girls who are being trafficked, what are you doing about boys? And when they say nothing, ask why not. The Latino population, a lot of them, they don't want to make a report because they are afraid the immigration is going to punish them. Well, if I go to a doctor's office or a therapist's office and I've been misgendered or used the wrong person used the wrong pronoun for me or used the wrong name for me two or three times before I even get into the therapist's room, I'm not going to feel very comfortable opening up to that therapist because all the damage has already been done. A lot of these women or men who are been victims of crime, they are so afraid that they don't want to go nowhere. Sometimes they don't have the money to go for it or sometimes they don't have nobody to drive for them and take it wherever they need to go. The reason I feel uh, such um, commitment to it uh, is because I'm a survivor. My opinion, my research, my information is from me. Uh, doesn't represent the state of Colorado, doesn't represent the Colorado judiciary. I am representing my experience, my research, and my compassion for this issue. Porque lo que a mí me ha pasado no es un cuento, es, es algo real. O sea, yo he pasado por todas esas cosas, ya las he superado, pero ahora estoy saliendo adelante. Y pienso que todas las personas, que, que deben ser miles los que tienen este tipo de problemas, o tal vez peores que el mío, tienen oportunidad de salir adelante. Tienen, porque hay personas que sí colaboran, que sí ayudan. We need to change our systems and we need to change the way that we think about these issues um, to build things like pronoun preference into your intake form, to um, do things like making sure that all staff are trained on uh, how to best serve LGBT folks in terms of intake, in terms of communication, in terms of language to use for people, um, and also just making sure that people have exposure to LGBT people so that the first time they're meeting somebody isn't when they're working with them in, an, in a really difficult way in a system that can be really oppressive. You know, I'm not asking that, that there be some kind of specialized treatment because there doesn't need to be. There just needs to be treatment. In 2008, I pedí ayuda para because también hubo violencia doméstica. But when I went to the police, efectivamente lo detuvieron, pero no me hablaron, nunca me dijeron que acciones yo podía tomar. Si yo hubiese sabido que existían tantas organizaciones que ayudan a las personas, como en mi caso, hace tiempo que yo ya me hubiese alejado de esa relación. When I started doing the work to train navigators, it was because all these women we get together and we want to help to talk for the people who doesn't know how to say and make feel comfortable the person and secure that she's going to be okay in a place where he's going to receive the assistance that they need. Some of that work is around um, ensuring that your communication and that your sessions that you're doing are victim-led and are really focused on the person who you're serving. Another thing, too, is um, making sure that you're not doing trickle-down training. You need to be training your frontline staff, you need to be training your volunteers, you need to be training people who are interfacing with folks every single day. Partner with person who has different culture than they have, so that way they can better understand the language. But if you put someone who knows what they try to say and help them, believe me, you will have more people who can ask for help. For marginalized people, 
seeing the option to put like they, them, and theirs as a pronoun on your, on your intake, for example, um, might be a life-changing experience that really allows them to open up to somebody in a way that they've never been able to before. That's really how we create true equality, is full integration into society for all identities, not just um, sort of little pieces on the margin. Please get your staff training to understand why sometimes the Latino woman doesn't come forward. I would challenge all of the agencies and all the providers to acknowledge that it's coming, that services for boys and men is coming, and it's long overdue. So why don't you step up to the plate and be in front of it instead of trying to catch up to it. The reality is this is what's already happening and it's happening whether you know about it or don't. And so um, it's, it's on you to inform yourself. Nunca pensé que me iba a pasar lo que me pasó. Es parte de mi vida. No la voy a poder borrar, pero sí la voy a poder superar.